So good morning, my name is Rebecca Smekla. I'm from the Department of Educational Technology with the School District of Palm Beach County. And today we are um, so excited to have Tom Mullany with us. Um, he is from our partnership with Dell and ALP. And today we're gonna be building relationships in a blended environment. Tom, can you flip to the next slide? Sure can. Thank you. So the session is recorded. Um, please keep your mic muted unless you would like to ask a question and we would love to hear your questions. Um, so please do unmute when you do have a question. Um, you can raise your hand, use the chat box, but we do um, hope that you will engage um, not only with Tom, but with all of the other participants as well. So uh, this um, course, you can get four in-service points. You have up until December to implement any of these things you learned today. So you have plenty of time um, if you're interested in in-service points. And with that, I'm going to pass it on over to Tom and let him introduce himself and uh, have a great session, everyone. Awesome. Thank you, Rebecca. It's a real pleasure to be with you all today. Uh, my name is Tom Mullaney. I'll give you a quick background on me. Uh, my time in education, I was special education for a long time. Uh, started off in uh, Bronx, New York. I'm originally from the New York area and my wife's from the Philadelphia area. So I moved to the Philadelphia area where I spent most of my time teaching. Uh, eventually switched over to middle and high school social studies. And then my wife and I were tired of the winters. Uh, something in Palm Beach you probably don't really have that much experience with, but uh, in New York and Philadelphia winters are miserable. And so we wound up moving down here to Hillsborough, North Carolina, kind of splitting the difference. Not as nice as Florida, but hey, at least um, the winters aren't so bad and we're within a day's drive of back where we're from. Uh, I'm a Google certified innovator, trainer, product expert for Classroom and Jamboard. Uh, let's see, do you all have Food Lion down there as a, a grocery store? Is that one of your grocery stores? Now, all right, I was about to mention that I'm a Food Lion MVP, but okay, it doesn't matter. All right, anyway. Um, so, and you all have the slides. Please, after the session, if you have any follow up questions or if something didn't, wasn't working for you, uh, or you got a great question in the chat before we even started uh, about um, uh, a tool that we'll be talking about today. So, please, uh, you know, you can always email me after the session. I know we're only together for an hour today. Uh, and our outcome today is that participants will use technology to build student, student, and student teacher relationships. And what I'm talking about is this. So there's a couple of things here. You know, blended learning is encouraged. And we know that in this day and age, kids can always be out of school, but participating digitally for reasons. But I, this is something that happened to me in my teaching career seven years ago, where I had kids, I had a kid I taught for a unit, uh, a whole a whole unit of our European history course went by without me ever meeting or speaking to this kid. And this kid had aced my test and had done a great job on their project because this digital technology can really bring us together. So my point here is that as we're innovating, as we're doing fun stuff with technology and our kids are using their screens, we don't wanna lose connection. We don't want to ha lose our connection with each other. And so we're going to just talk about things you can do with technology that build relationships, if that makes sense. I always address tech and equity. Please, when you're using technology, be equitable with it. All right. It makes op oppressive teaching all the worse. It makes inclusive teaching all the better. I'll give you an example. We're going to talk about Screencastify today. As a teacher, I can use Screencastify to say, hey, kids, I know that you like most learners, need multiple opportunities to learn. Therefore, I have this tool called Screencastify. I'm going to make little video lesson recaps. I'm going to make little uh, videos for each of your vocabulary terms. I'll put them in Google Classroom or wherever you normally check to get your materials so that you have multiple opportunities to learn. That's wonderful. That's increasing access. That's giving kids more opportunity. Great. I could also say, hey, students, I'm going to use Screencastify to record lengthy lectures that you're going to take notes on every evening, right? And now we're making assumptions about students' internet access, about their time and ability to complete homework. And so we're not being equitable. So be very, very cognizant of what you do with this technology. You may have a great idea, and if it's not addressing equitable concerns, uh, then it's not good. Speaking of being equitable, I should use this. So captions preference, there we go. 
my ca the captions in Google Slides are not 100% accurate, but hey, better than nothing, right? All right, I'd also say um, try not to use devices when your students have them as a $300 pencil. And now Carrie's here, she can tell me what the points are, but you know, what okay, the prices three, are. Okay, $3.98 maybe, I don't know, I'm not in sales, but. So sorry, yeah, I know, I, 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 300 is a nice round number. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I always use that. But the point is, is it's very easy to use technology to research, word process, things that we can do, we've been able to do forever, right? Uh, my kids can type in there. Great. At the same time, they can do so much more. And so these are three questions to ask yourself to determine whether or not you're making the most of the technology. One, are students being creative? Do students have multiple opportunities to learn? I'm a real stickler for that. I, my, you know, I look back on my teaching, especially when I first started teaching history, and I wonder to myself, if the student didn't learn it when I lectured it, how were they going to learn it, right? So multiple opportunities to learn, and can students easily access their work and materials? That's something I really love, you know, put it in classroom, have things neat and organized and user-friendly, but okay. All right. A little quote that I'll just read to you uh, about connection. We know that human beings desire to feel valued, known, respected, and safe. That's just a basic condition for a relationship to happen. It's a basic condition for learning to happen. When you've got a learning space in person or online where students do not tend to feel valued or known or respected or safe, learning will be way more friction heavy. So the idea is that connection, attempted connection between teacher and student, student and student, this facilitates learning because these relationships, they act like a friction reducer, a lubricant. That's by an educator named Dave Stewart Jr. Just something to think about as we go. So what is building relationships in a blended learning environment? Blended learning empowers students to express, to learn at their own pace and express their creativity, right? Blended learning has become such a you know, hey, let's do this, right? I remember the flip classroom. I used to say flip classroom, but I did it in my classroom. I wouldn't send them home, but we'd flip it in the classroom. We often think about technology and screens as an isolating force, but what if we use technology to foster connection, both teacher to student and student to student? In this session, we will learn how to use technology to build relationships in blended learning environments. All right, let's get started. So the start of the school year, which is, that should be top of mind for everybody here, right? Uh, it's that very unique, distinct time of year when we know it's coming. Basically, it's the Sunday of our summer vacation right now. And we know Monday's coming. The start of the school year is the perfect time to start building relationships. As Harry Wong said, the most important day of a person's education is the first day of school, not graduation day. That's kind of funny because yesterday I was presenting to teachers about a portrait of a graduate in a different district. So now, now we're talking about the first day. I don't know if anyone here has also read Harry uh, and Harry Wong and I'm, I'm blanking on his Harry and Rosemary Wong. That's typical me. I'm giving credit to the man, not the woman. But anyway, uh, Harry and Rosemary Wong, that, that book, The First Days of School. I'm not sure if anyone else here has read it. Maybe I'm a little older. Um, but that was a seminal book uh, as I got started. And one of the big things I will say that I uh, take from that, and I think if we look back and read that book today, we might look at some things and say, eh, you know, from a 2020, 2022 lens, we might not love, but routines and procedures, they were so right about that. That is so true. You got routines and procedures in place, you're going to be successful, both you as a person who needs to have a positive, good work environment and the students. So let's talk about recording an introductory video. So this is something your kids haven't even met you yet. I don't, I can't speak for Palm Beach. Sometimes, you know, there's a, there's a back to school evening, or you might be able to get your rosters um, in what your student information system. And what if you use the email addresses of the students or the guardians to shoot shoot out a an intro video. And so 
Screencastify, and this is, ooh, that screen capture I did of me recording in Screencastify was a little rough. But if you've ever used Screencastify, you know you can just do uh, using just your webcam. You don't have to record your screen. To me, that's the perfect, you know, I'm out today. Let me leave you some instructions, right? Perfect use of that. But for a quick little, hey, I'm Mr. Mullaney. Here's the deal. Oh, wow. The captions did not like my last name. It's okay. Do this as a nice, quick way of doing, of recording yourself. You can use your phone. You can also even use Adobe Express. And I'll just quickly, uh, this came up in the chat. If you notice, I have a little premium thing here. I can't use schedule. You all in education should not have that, but uh, you may, and you can talk to your district IT. But if I go here and I click video, and intro, video and you can use one of these story templates i typically just start from scratch what i'm going to tell you is that adobe express does not have a screen recorder it doesn't have record your webcam you can import a, a video from your hard drive so if you've recorded in screencastify but it's a nice way to kind of dress up some video you can add some captions and some split screens and some titles uh, especially if you record with your phone and then you have a you know you have a portrait rather than a landscape you could you know split it up and have some fun with that there's themes uh, as you can see so you can have some fun uh, and those themes will add a little background music which is nice uh, so just something to think about if you really want to like have a little fun with that intro video for your students another thing how you pronounce your students' names is so important. You want to build a relationship and you're mispronouncing. Think about attendance on day one. Oh, right. Like I, I used to do my uh, assigned seating floor plan just so that I could have the kids go there and then just do attendance that way. <laughs> that was the only reason. Because I just didn't want to go through roll at the beginning of class. That's not a good way to start class. If you've heard of Flipgrid, you probably have. Guess what? It changed its name. We're everything's changing its name in 2022. It's now called Flip. But they there is a strategy where you have your students use Flip to, uh, and here's the their back to school, to share with the teacher and share with the class how to pronounce their name. So that's some gold right there. It's something that you may want to have your students do and i've incorporated the blog post there by the way i'm sorry i didn't share the agenda so let me just share the agenda in the chat real quick because sometimes you know we talk about multiple opportunities to learn well you can have the slides and okay well now i gotta go flip through your slide presentation some people might like having a google doc instead by the way the agenda has our slides which you can just open with open preview. So you can follow along that way. That includes the speaker notes, by the way. And if you wanna email me after, check that out, you can click on my name there and it should work. Uh, so this has all the good stuff as far as um, all the links, everything I'll be talking about today is there. All right, and you know what? I see that so everyone always mispronounces your your name. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be respectful. I'm not even gonna try, because I know I have something in my head, and I know I probably won't be anyway. It's it's, it's all good. Thank you for sharing that though. That's wonderful. All right, and then here's something about learning about your students and their strengths. Um, there's an educator, George Koros. He's, he's a pretty big person in education. He does a lot of keynotes and whatnot. Um, but he has this strategy about, that you can use at the very um, beginning. And again, he wrote this, I think, with remote learning and uh, the, the initial stage of the pandemic and we're all away from each other, virtual classrooms and all that. Uh, he wrote that with that in mind. Having said that, uh, these are some things that you can use um, in this post that I think will be very, very useful for you. Um, so sharing and learning about student strengths and passions. All right, let's take a couple minutes where I'm gonna ask you to, 
to do some reflection and uh, try some little practice activities, maybe three minutes. Uh, that way it's not just me talking for 60 minutes and you can at least go to some of the resources that I've uh, shouted out and you can bookmark them or save them for later or get started. Um, otherwise it might not be as sticky. Um, so what can introducing yourself with a video accomplish? Like, why would you do that? Tom's suggesting it, but why would I possibly have a good idea there? And how does learning name pronunciation build relationships, which I think a few of you have already reflected on. And I'm going to ask you, um, you can plan an intro video about yourself. Like what would you do? Uh, especially by the way, in Adobe spark, uh, if you, well, and I called it spark, it's express. Sorry. If you're not comfortable recording a video of yourself talking to your screen, well, what if you just did some images and some text and here it's a video, right? Um, remember this plus text, photo, icon. So you could make a video that way where you don't have to talk to camera. All right. Um, create a name pronunciation flip topic so you can start that and read uh, read this it's linked on the slides this is slide 16 and consider how you can use it to learn about your students and their strengths this is all also linked all in this getting started part of the agenda let me do a three minute timer real quick and then um we will go from there during this time i might mute myself so you don't hear me drinking and breathing um, but you can also uh, you can also unmute or drop in the chat and then I'll hop back on. Um, I'm just going to do a quick little settings. Oh, now I'm going to get that timer on in a second. I'm just trying to get a, an image that I want for this. Okay, have at it and we'll come back in three.
All right, our three minute timer ended and I didn't even give you a warning. By the way, for those of you who use classroom timers, I personally uh, like the Google search one, but recently the Google search one went away. You know how you know you type in you know three minute timer into Google, that's gone now. Uh, you know, you type in solitaire or dice into Google and it'll, you know, you get a solitaire game or you can roll a dice. It's good for if you ever need to like do something by chance with your kids. Anywho, and you can do multiple, like you don't need to do, you know, set it to eight side die or five sided die. It's pretty cool. Uh, but timer tab, I like timer tab because you can set the, the buzzer to be a YouTube video and you can change it to whatever background image you see here. I have the Palm Beach, uh, lo you know, school's logo. So just uh, timertab.com is my preference. I know there's a lot of them out there. All right, let's talk about something that's pretty important in education. And that is, oh, not that, sorry. Brain breaks and openers. And so what I'm talking about here is your students need a little time to just kind of relax, kind of do something a little fun, get away from the learning for a minute. Uh, they also need, you know, things to open class, things to kind of like get those relationships going. So students, they need fun activities and brain breaks to learn. They also get these activities, get students to collaborate and build relationships from show and tell to cooperative digital activities. They build community in blended learning environments. If, if you hear my cat in the background, Fred, calm down. So I highly recommend this podcast episode. If you've ever listened to the 10 minute teacher podcast, there is an episode called distracted why students can't focus and what you can do about it. And there, the guest go talks at length about, um, how this district did like a virtual show and tell and other things. And they saw, and they did this at the elementary level and it worked so well that they brought it to the middle and high schools. And just by starting virtual meetings with a little online show and tell, it really helped students. Uh, and this Dr. James Lang talks about how students need brain breaks. They need little things to do to just kind of take a break, have a little fun, and then get back into it, right? So I'm gonna showcase one that I think is a really good one. There's plenty out there that you can do, um, but it's Puzzle Party. And I've linked Shared Piano. If you wanna do that with your kids, that's a lot of fun where people can digitally play a, a piano together. Um, and there I have this Icebreakers at Rock uh, post from Cult of Pedagogy. Um, I gotta show you Puzzle Party though. I love Puzzle Party. Uh, it's this one where you make a collaborative game out of any work of art. So here, you know, this is uh, uh, Obama's uh, official White House portrait, right? And you set it to, so, uh, to multiplayer, and then you can start putting it together. And you see, I just put there, look, hold on, let me put these two pieces together. I can do this. Hey, yeah, I can do that. And by the way, now I can click this to move his group. Um, I can also uh, set the background color to be black if I care to. Um, I can hide that preview. I can invite participants. And that's how you'd invite participants. So you can get a couple of these going. Maybe have a little competition. The A through M's are together with one link. And the N through Z's are with another. We're going to try this. We're not going to do this President Obama one. We're going to do NASA. So they have a NASA version. And I'm talking to Florida educators. Of course we're doing NASA. Are you kidding me? Uh, let's, all right, let's do this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open this one. Oh, and by the way, if I just go back real quick, uh, yes, exit. Sorry about that. I just wanted to demo that there's easy, medium and difficult, and we're going to do easy. Uh, you know, maybe as your kids get better, you can do, uh, difficult, but we're going to do this really quickly. Uh, let's click on this. Let me do multiplayer. I'm going to copy this link into the chat and I'm going to ask you to bring it up and let's see if we can do this real quick. This is, this is going to be our little brain break. Uh, we click on that. If you click in the chat, you should see it. I'm going to start kind of drawing, you know, trying to maybe move some corners around uh, to facilitate help out play as well as you all. And if you join in, and by the way, now I see right here, I see I have six players. Now it's not, it's an arts and culture experiment. It's not, you know, you're not going to get a record of, well, Toby moved this 
and uh, you know, um, Joan moved that. You're not going to get that. But you know, it's just for fun. It's just for a little like collaborative thing. And I, by the way, I see these things coming together very nicely done by you all. I think at some point, you know, we'll have to use that move by group because people are putting these groups together very nicely, as I can tell. Oh yeah. So I wonder, I, I, I hope I haven't like crashed our whole session by doing this, but uh, I think it'll be fun. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not even that, you see, it's not that huge. Um, and we're getting there. Oh yeah, we're getting there. I didn't set a timer. I could have set a timer, uh, which would be a fun little way. And there we did it. All right. Yeah, everybody, we did it. Nice. Oh, and that's so great. So the NASA edition is, um, that's one that is, um, recent it's just it's usually been the art and they just started this nasa one uh, it doesn't have anything to do with the james webb it's before it's before james webb uh maybe there'll be a james webb one later uh anyway uh i, I did it didn't even occur to me oh florida district uh if i if i do this with the texas district definitely have to do puzzle party as well um, but i think you all would say hey no right we're the nasa state anyway all right let's keep it going uh, let's just some real quick reflection questions and I'm going to give you maybe two minutes to just open some of these resources, uh, and then we'll keep going. Uh, how, or why do you think activities and brain breaks help students learn? How are connections made when the whole class has a collaborative task when groups have one? So I want you to think about that. What we just did, I, I know you probably are evaluating, oh, how would I use this with my kids? I'm going to just say, would I send 30 kids into a puzzle party? No, but maybe half the class, you know, I think you could do maybe half the class and I think you'd be okay. Maybe for younger kids, you'd have to maybe make two or three versions of the same puzzle and, you know, share differently. I, you know, you have to think about it, but sometimes with collaboration, it's amazing whole class. And sometimes it's a lot better small. Um, as far as your practice uh, activities, I'm like I said, I'm going to give you two minutes. Um, check out puzzle party, Puzzle Party NASA, NASA edition and shared piano. Think about games and icebreakers that are traditionally analog. Consider how you might use technology to enhance them. And in our agenda, uh, I have here, I have some videos. I have that podcast. It's only 10 minutes-ish. Um, I highly recommend uh, that. All right, let's just take 10 minutes, or not 10 minutes, two minutes. I just want you to like click on some of those links and just like, you know, get familiar with it. Um, and we'll do that. So two, start countdown, and we'll go. All right, uh, I will mute and we'll come back in two minutes.
right then. All right, so now we're going to talk about something that most teachers use in some form or fashion. And it's a way that students can stay connected and communicate, right? We always, whether, whether it's the portrait of graduate I was presenting about yesterday, the four C's, everywhere I go, col um, collaboration and communication are hot topics. And so let's talk class discussion, right? Class discussion enriches the learning experience. In blended learning environments, it can give voice to reticent students. Think about the traditional class discussion. Raise your hand, speak in front of everybody. It's public speaking. It's more fear than death, but kids have to do it and they have to do it for a grade. <laughs> uh, digital tools make it a little bit more approachable and doable for students. Dialogue in class builds relationships and helps practice digital citizenship, another hot topic. So first, let's just talk about classroom and if I, let me bring up uh, a classroom that I am a teacher in uh, as my cat goes a little bit off the walls. So I'm here in my modern European history class. I'll go to classwork and you have your question option, okay? Um, it defaults to short answer, that's what you want. I, there is a multiple choice option. If you're using that, just use Google Forms. Or should, yeah, just use Google Forms. Uh, then you have your question. You have your instructions. One thing you can do if you have moat is you can be multimodal. I always tell teachers, be multimodal when you can. And so if I, hey, students, I want you to respond to this prompt. And here are some thoughts that I have. Okay. And so then that when they see it, they can hit a little play button and hear my voice right there if they have the Moat Chrome extension installed. If they don't, it'll pop them into another tab where they can hear that. Additionally, and by the way, have you all noticed this? The attachment buttons in Classroom are now in color. It only took them seven years, but it's happened. Uh, I don't know. I can't tell you how many times I've intended to insert a drive uh, file and I've clicked YouTube. And how many times I've intended to insert a YouTube video and click drive. It's happened so many times. But anyway, there you can add your YouTube video. Be multimodal. What I'm telling you is that text and white pixels is not the best way to engage students in 2022. Uh, they have so many distractions and so many things calling their name. So please, please, uh, if you can add video, if you can add audio with moat to question prompts, please do. I'm also seeing this add-ons, and I don't know if you all are a Google Workspace premium district. You can let me know if you, you are. If you are, you're going to see these add-ons, which are kind of fun, especially Google Arts and Culture. If you're using that, you can um, add it and it kind of embeds right there, which is nice. All right. From there, I want you to go to think about two things. Do you want students replying to each other? I would suggest yes, especially for building relationships. That's by default. Students can edit answer that one you have to be very careful about because students don't see their classmates answers until they submit. If they can edit their answer, well, like, do you think they're going to change it based on, you know, oh, you know, Allison uh, mentioned so many more things than I did. Uh, better tidy that up, you know, better add some stuff. So you have to think about that, whether or not you want to let them edit their answer. Uh, of course, if they can reply to each other, they could probably add some more in their replies. But so that's something to think about. There's also Flip. I won't get deep into it, but you all know Flip, Flipgrid, now Flip. Wonderful tool for video. The only thing, oh, thank you, Dana. So yes, you can use those add-ons in Google Classroom. So that's really cool. And Flip. I think 90 seconds, two minutes, that's probably a good time limit to set when you create those uh, topics. I don't think you want to hear from any student on video for three minutes consecutively. And especially if, you know, I have a class of 16 right now, but you know, if my class was 30 and I had to go through, so even 60 seconds, that might be for a much shorter, much lower stakes conversation and discussion. 
Um, but just be very considerate of that. You want to cap it, but you also don't want to rush your kid. There's that, you know, some kids are going to have some things to say, and then they see that 90 seconds and they're going to feel rushed. So just know that those are some things that you're going to have to address while you do it. And the third thing I want to talk about with class discussion. So to me, adding video, add, using Moat to add some audio to Google Classroom, using Flip for video discussion, this is some good things here. But there's one website I do want you to at least take a look at if you have a chance, and that's Kialo, Kialo EDU. And it's a free website, but what I really like about it, let me bring it over here, is that Kialo, oh, i sorry, I didn't log in, my bad. Uh, it's signing with Google, so that's lovely, is that when you do it, and here, let me bring my uh, World War One long-term causes. Okay. So what happens is you create a discussion prompt, and underneath, you can have theses, things. And so here I have one for World War I. Um, click a claim to see the, cl uh, the claims underneath. And so what happens is you can make these claims or theses, and then you can add pros and cons to each one. So it's kind of like cite your sources, build your arguments. I know this is a big thing with teachers and students, right? Well, what are your supporting details? What are your arguments? The Kialo EDU, I'm going to just give you like a brief, broad overview right now. Um, but here, you know, I have cultural belief in the glory of war was the most important factor. At that point, I'm probably going to add some pros. Hey, did you see these propaganda posters I found? Did you see this YouTube video I found about propaganda in World War I, right? Um, about the glory of war. And then if I click on the next one, international anarchy was the most important factor. And, you know, I probably have to put some pros about how these things happened and these wars took place and there were no consequences and what, whatever it might be. Um, and you see here, I have all my theses about the long-term causes of World War I, and then we can build pros and cons. So a lot of fun with that. Again, it's called Kialo EDU, and it's that whole, well, support your arguments, build your arguments. Um, and I, look, there's all this feedback and um, you can rate things, uh, you can get, you can heart things. There's all sorts of cool stuff in there. So I'm going to highly encourage you if you have a minute to take a look at that. All right. Um, again, w for this part, we might do about like two minutes because I want to get into fee feedback for students and how that can help build relationships. But some reflection questions. What scaffolds do students need when participated in blended learning discussions? Think about that. How does making class discussion multimodal with flip affect relationship building. Oh, that's a good one. And a little practice here. So create a question in the Google Classroom Classwork tab, create a topic and flip, uh, create an account in Kialu uh, EDU and explore its features. You choose what you want to do in the next two. I'm going to only put two on there. I'm sorry if, I, if we're being rushed, uh, but I want to make sure that we have time and we'll go from there. Please feel free to drop questions in the chat or uh, unmute during this time or raise your hand if you're more comfortable doing that. All right, well, you know what? I might just take a quick minute to go into flip if folks are having some issues. Um, let me click in there. And I think what you wanna do, and I, I know you can email me later, we can talk more, but it's all about creating your groups, which are typically your classes. And once you've created a, class, a, a group or a class, and so I'll call this Palm Beach, and I know I might 
And you know, you can use your Google Classroom. You can okay, uh, only people you approve, great. And then once you're there, and you can copy your link or share it to Classroom, um, you create these topics. And a topic is just a class discussion, what Google Classroom calls a question. Um, and there's your recording time. Don't set it to 15 seconds. I mean, the kids might love that, but. Um, so I, you know, I'm sorry. I, I, you know, I hate it when I hear that technology isn't working for folks. Um, and by the way, you can be a little multimodal there with, uh, you can hyperlink, you can also, um, import images or record your own video. Lots of fun stuff that are at YouTube. Um, yeah, uh, again, Phil, I, I don't know, Phil, you can always, if, if you can make a screencast of what, you know, you can castify to make a screencast of what's not working and email me. Um, no, I always hate it when, when I hear someone um, is not getting the benefit that others seem to get. Uh, all right, let's talk about feedback. Can we talk about feedback for students? Reading feedback on assignments can be intimidating for students. Remember one of the Wong's rules, uh, never grade with red pen. Remember that? And actually, by the way, like social, emotional like response or strategy from like the late 90s, early 2000s, I can't believe it. But anyway, good for them. They, 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 they knew that. Anyway, but what if teachers can use technology to add their voice to and build feed relationships with feedback? Use technology to add your voice to feedback. This adds your supportive tone to what you say. Research shows this technique makes it like more likely students act on teacher feedback. So let's talk. So there's a couple things I want to talk about. And first is uh, in Google Classroom. And but this a lot of what I'm going to show you works in Docs too. If you have Moat, and if you and the kids have Moat, um, so let's get into. So here I have an assignment. Uh, I've assigned my kids their French Revolution study guide, and I go in, and this is the feedback screen, right? And what I can do here is I can, oh, my moat's not showing. Let me hit refresh and get my moat showing. It should. Ah, okay. Well, it's at least it's showing. There is, okay. Um, so we're let's just talk about comments right now. Hypermotes are more like when you link text, you make text play sound in the document, in the content of the document. It's not a comment. But here, hi Tom. Hey, I just wanted to let you know I love this and that. I think you're you can improve this paragraph by adding a supporting detail, whatever it may be. So we hit comment. Great. Um, and that's the instructions, by the way. That's not where the students are actually. This student hasn't started. So that would be my comment. Hey, get to work. Um, but anyway, what happens there is that we play. You, I don't have it configured so that you hear the audio, but it's playing. Kid plays it right there. They hear the tone of your voice because think about feedback for work, right? Uh, if, it's a if it's a voice without the sound of your voice, if it's just a text, it can come off very harsh, but the sound of my voice moderates it a lot, doesn't it? The other thing I can do with feedback, and I don't know if you all, I, my screen just went black for a second. I don't know why, but it's coming back now. Okay. Is if I click this screencast, the five button, and I hit record, and I can embed my webcam or not, but I'm not going to this time. And I'll do screen two. And we get it, okay. Hey, Tom, I'm going through your paper, your study guide. And what I would say is that here, you didn't write anything. So can you just write something there? It seems like you missed that out there. Uh, but anyway, yeah, okay. Oh, we got, oh, all right, we got one GIF. I need a GIF here. I asked you to put one here. Can you put one there? Thank you. All right, thanks, Tom. And then I stop my recording. And what I can do, I love it when apps are telling me, like, how would you rate this? Would you recommend? I don't need you to give me homework right now. Anyway, um, what I would do then is I would click copy share link. And then I can throw that really wherever, but it might be here on the private comment. 
uh, and moat loops. We won't get into that today, but it's like a whole thing that you, it's a new feature you can do. I could use moat, but I could also just say, hey, Tom, please watch my feedback on your doc and then paste it. And I just pasted the Screencastify link, Screencastify. If I hit copy, share link, it goes right there. Um, by the way, it's also really nice um, when it does that, sorry. Uh, uh, that Screencastify watch page tells you who all opened your video, which is really nice, who watched it. And I click post and now they can do that. All right, they get a little notification saying that. Uh, for them to see that, I would have to return it. This is an in progress right now. Um, Oh, thank you. Yes. Yes, it does. Any, remember, use technology equitably. Try to break down barriers with it. Don't erect barriers with it. That's all right. So that's just what I'm saying. Anyway, uh, by the way, you can also add emojis to that with, um, with your um, colon in those moat comments. One of the, I'll just show you real quick. Oh, I'm in suggesting mode. Can I do this? Let's see. There is now an emoji feed, uh, feed reaction in Google Docs comments. Uh, so now please be nice with it. Uh, but if they say something funny, maybe you laugh, right? Uh, if they say something, you know, if there's something that you love, if you're really excited, maybe, you know, like applause or cl I guess clap is what I have to type. There we go. Um, you know, don't use the poop emoji. We're trying to build reaction or uh, relationships, but you know, and by the way, do you all see me? Am I frozen? You're yeah, you're frozen. All right. Let me turn off camera, <laughs> turn camera back on. All right. Um, something went wrong. All right. As long as you can still see my screen, we're, we'll just keep going. I don't know what's going on with that. All right. But yeah, don't use the poop, poop emoji. There is no, Reason. I don't think unless you're and if you're teaching about environment uh, and there's something about wastewater, maybe anyway. Uh, so I have some some information there that you can use uh, about Screencastify and Moat. Research shows that adding voice to feedback is more effective. Uh, what other blended learning practices can teachers improve with their voice? Uh, what should teachers keep in mind to give supportive verbal or video feedback? Uh, all right. So, you know what? We're out of time now. I want to make sure we get everything in. So maybe we'll just keep going. Typically, I might give you a break here to install mode or screencast the fire, at least play with those. Um, but those are two things you can do for feedback. And let me just, again, try. All right. And maybe I'm back. It looks like I'm back to me. Let's talk about a couple other strategies you can do. Uh, one is the virtual I Wonder board. Uh, so many classrooms use an I Wonder board uh, where students can post questions they are interested in exploring. So what if we did that virtually, right? Um, and I have here some links. And remember, this is all laid out on the agenda as well. So here's my feedback for students, some, you know, some links, but then also some YouTube videos. By the way, uh, I don't know if you are aware of this, but remember, uh, in Google Docs, a linked YouTube video, you can watch it right there. You don't have to open a new tab. You don't have to um, leave the doc. Um, please take advantage of that, you know, point that out with your kids so your kids don't have to have 20 tabs open. That works in Docs with linked slides, YouTube videos, and other Google Docs. So if you link to a website with a lot of text, maybe copy paste that text into a Google Doc, link it in this Google Doc, cite them, Hey, I got this from Smithsonian or wherever you may have gotten it. And, but, you know, anyway, something to think about. Um, so here's some some learning uh, for you about I Wonder boards and some tools you could do with this with. Could you do it with Google Slides? Could you do it with Jamboard, Canva or flip for a video I Wonder board? Um, I would also add Adobe Express um, to that. I actually let me just. Uh, let me see in Adobe Express if I search templates for I wonder. Board. I don't know if this will work or not. Um, okay, maybe not I wonder, but um, especially if you do um, 
what should I call it? Uh, vision boards. They have a ton of, I did this yesterday. Yeah, there's a ton of vision board templates. All right, anyway, let's keep going. All right, a couple of reflection questions, and then we'll get into, uh, you know what? Maybe then I'll give you a couple minutes break, and then we'll do talk about staying connected throughout the school year. Um, how does commenting in I Wonder boards facilitate relationship collaboration? So your kids make them, you comment and talk about, have that conversation, right? How can teachers uh, use questions and comments on I Wonder boards to spur creativity and inquiry? All right, so you know what? Let's take three, let's take three minutes. I'm gonna have you, in these three minutes, if you wanna look at the I Wonder board, if you wanna look at feedback for students, take a look at both, maybe we'll say two and a half, and then we'll talk about staying connected and then I'll give you our session survey and we'll call it a day. So. say 215. Um, feel free to work to use the I wonder board part or screencast a fire moat. My timer wasn't going. I think I'm going to make it one minute. Sorry, everybody. Uh, it's just so that we have time. I was just com oh, yeah oh, there I am I was just commenting on uh, Alyssa I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name we need to do the flip activity uh, but that's a great use of technology to address that issue uh, for sure and uh, Allison uh, that is so cool and by the way if I bring up that flip real quick uh, notice I can tell right away this person did it with their phone uh, because it is in this portrait mode. Uh, and I think an iPhone, because it's I see the letters are reversed. But how cool is that? Uh, that is so cool. And it's very easy to do. Um, and they did it in Flip. Uh, so that is so cool. All right. Uh, way, to, way to brag. Uh, no, that's totally uh, welcome and encouraged. All right. One last thing, and then we'll um, wrap up. Staying connected. So here are some strategies teachers can use to maintain connection in blended re learning relationships. Uh, send video postcards. So this strategy, I have a blog post for it, and here's an example of one. 
Um, but when you do something interesting or something that maybe even connects with the, um, with the curriculum, send a video postcard. I'll give you an example. I always say I did a video where I took, I went to the grocery store, I took a picture of two loaves of, of like really nice French bread because we were learning in the French revolution that peasants ate two pounds of bread a day. Imagine by the way, eating two pounds of bread per day, but okay. And I took a picture of it and I incorporated the picture into my lesson video and I ate in the lesson video. But what if I had like recorded myself at the store, just like, hey, I'm, I'm getting this bread. I'm putting it on the scale. You know, it looks so good. I'm going to buy it. Um, and then just throwing that into my Google Classroom. Like, <laughs> anyway, uh, so video postcards, something you can do uh, with your kids. A daily check-in. So use Google Forms. Uh, Alyssa was talking about using it for attendance. Uh, I have a blog post from Mari Venturino about using it for like a social emotional check-in and she has a template and all that good stuff. So that's something else you can do. Um, and then dialogue journals. And so again, I, you know, I, I, you can tell I'm a big fan of cult of pedagogy and 10 minute teacher. Um, I got one of, one of these links is from cult of pedagogy about using dialogue journals. This is especially good for writing practice and for my ELA teachers. All right. Couple reflection questions how do students benefit by learning more about their teacher um, and i also say seeing teachers outside of the classroom environment i was a special education teacher and i had a um i had a student who really thought of pe thought of people tied to places and one of my aides ran into the student outside of school and the student was just blown away couldn't believe that my aide was not at school but anyway um how can teachers act on, on responses from a daily check-in form to meet students' needs? So if you did that strategy, what would happen when you saw a need? So you have to think about that, right? I'm gonna give you some practice activities, but I'm also gonna ask you to complete our feedback survey in the limited time we have left. Um, that's true, <laughs> yeah, we magically appear. There is no there is no off stage, we're just on stage, right? Um, so there's a daily check-in form template that you can use. Uh, consider which tech tools might be useful for s facilitating dialogue journals and consider how and when you might make a video postcard for students. Uh, I will leave this time open for questions, but also I'm going to ask you to complete the session survey, which I think is the right survey link. I hope um, you all can tell me if it doesn't work. Uh, it is should be this link right here. I'm going to put this in the chat. Oh, and by the way, you all recorded this, so that tells me you probably have um, premium Google Workspace. Um, so I'm going to put leave that on the screen and stick around. I know we're basically at time, but I would. Oh, uh, can we do the other slides, too? Because we have some other slides to get through. Yes, thank you. I was going to um, just go ahead and uh, let everybody know that we do have another session um, right after this at 1050 simple tools for complex thinking and then tomorrow we have a, a longer session um, building instructional practices you're going to walk away with technology tools and projects to learn authentically and that's also with tom um, so we'll uh, get to see him again hopefully you'll stop in tomorrow it's going to be a really really informative session um, the video will be margarita inside of elm in the course once this um class is over and the recording has processed, we will put it inside of the course. So you'll be able to find it there. Um, next slide, Tom. Uh, you know, we have to always uh, promote our upcoming events. Our 2022 technology conference is virtual again this year. Um, our theme is resilience in education, looking beyond the horizon. Um, you can register at technologyconference.palmbeachschools.org, and we definitely hope that you will join us. Um, it begins at 8 a.m. And uh, the last slide, I think, is oh. just... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Go ahead and register, Tom. Um, we also allow, we allow anyone to attend our, our, our conference, <laughs> so please register as well. Um, thank you all for joining us. All the session materials will be in the e-learning course as soon as the video begin, uh, finishes processing, which I am going to stop the video now.
Um, and then thank you, you know, everyone from uh, Educational Technology. This is our training team. Feel free to reach out to us. Um, we are here to support you throughout the year. Um, and then I'll let Tom wrap it up by, uh, you know, any uh, questions he may have from the group. Oh, no.